everyone welcome back to Avo tutorials today i have something really cool that i would like to share with you is creating youtube end screens on figma today i'll be guiding you on how i create this version over here from scratch and it's very similar to the one i currently have on my own channel on my own channel it looks like this and you can see that the icon for channel and also the icon for video is movable but you also have to take note that you can only move within this rectangular over here that's why when you design you have to be very careful on making sure that you do not design anything that is clickable at the top or at the bottom the bottom is the play bar so you just have to avoid putting it too close to the edge when you upload your video on youtube the red box is where you are able to move around your elements which is the channel button or the video or playlist or whatever you want and in terms of specs, I actually found this one on Reddit. It's actually uploaded by this guy called r slash YouTube three years ago, and it's really useful. I will link this down below if you need the specs of the elements. Now let's start creating this one from scratch. Let me go down here to give ourselves a little more space. Click on the shape button over here, click on rectangle, make sure you toggle it down if you do not have rectangle selected. Draw any size that you like and then readjust the width and the height. So the width is 1920, the height is 1080. This is the specs for 16 by 9 which is a YouTube video size. So I'm going to lock it as that so that we can keep it as it is, 16 by 9 and we have to change up this color because right now it's gray in color if you're not sure what color goes well together you can actually just head to google and search up color palettes and you can see a bunch of different color palettes that you can choose from for me i actually chose this one because i really like how um, the purple goes well with the brown and i like how the color scheme is when you have that over there then you can use your uh, color picker to actually pick out the color so it's really helpful to have it in figma itself I'm going to change up the color over here and I want to change it up to the light purple. So I'm going to click fill, click on the eyedrop, click on the color picker and then click light purple. So there you go. Very nice. Now next we need to create the layer on top which is this wavy bottom element over here and we do that using the pen tool. The pen tool can be quite intimidating to use at first, but once you master it, it's a really helpful tool to draw anything or create any elements that you like on Figma. And now we're going to use it, the pen tool, to create like that wavy look. And we're going to start off from the top here because I know I want to have like a wave over here from the right. So I'm going to start here from the right. And then I'm going to do a couple of uh, stops as well so that... Um, I'm able to create the waves later on. So it will start off as a straight line. Later on, we need to adjust it and give it a little bit of curve. We also need to close up the shape so that it becomes a actual rectangle and then we can fill it up with color later on. Because if you do not close it up, it's just going to be a straight line. So now we have it as a rectangle and I'm going to create the waves. You're going to click on this bend tool over here next to the pen. And then I'm going to start creating the wave so I'm gonna do a little bump over there a little wave over here and a little wave over here not like it yeah very nice so oh here is this does not look very smooth so I'm gonna edit this and click and then I'm gonna smooth it in out click done yeah this one now looks better and now do you have a little wave so now since you have this shape but you do not have a color you need to fill it up with color and remove the stroke because you do not want that stroke over there now the color here it's not following our color palette so i'm going to change it up to dark purple there you go now you have a little wave over here and before we continue i just want to frame it up so that everything stays within this 1920 by 1080 frame so I'm going to frame the selection and make sure it's within 1920 by 1080. Very nice. I'm going to expand this a little bit so that um, it covers the edges as well. So there's no like white space. Okay, and that's done. Next up, we want to create the little blobs over here, which are light brown in color. And how we do that is you can use the pen tool for sure to create your blobs. 
but there's an easier way to do it. There's a block plugin. So over here at the top, click on it. Instead of components, click on plugins and then type out blobs. And you can see it's right here because I've recently used it and then click run. When you click run, there's going to be a pop-up coming out with different kinds of blobs that you can choose and even adjust. So for example, something like this, you can adjust the complexity, um, you can adjust the uniqueness. I really like um, something a little bit more, yeah, like this one works, I like this. So I click insert. Then now once I click insert, let me move this away, I can adjust this color to the light brown that I want. So I'm just gonna go to color picker and click it on my color palette over here. And there you go. And then I'm gonna adjust this. I want to adjust this to place it at the bottom left. Now you can see that it's outside, like the vector is outside of this frame. So you just have to make sure that you drag it within the frame so that when you export it, it's going to be inside. And because right now it's outside of the 1920 by 1080, you just have to make sure that um, you clip the content. Yeah, so that it is within the frame that we want. So you click on that, then I'm gonna adjust it. I'm gonna copy and paste it and create another one maybe here at the bottom. So yeah, like this one looks good. And I'm gonna maybe have another one at the top, but maybe like a different uh, side of the blob. You can actually adjust it that way, rotate it however you want. I think this one looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay, we're done with the blob, the big blobs. Now we want to create the mini blob. So you can see there's like small ones over here. Again, you can use the pen tool anyhow you like, but I'll go ahead and use the blobs again and maybe pick out a different shape, a roughly different shape. Maybe something like this. Maybe, yeah, like this. I can use this. And then I'm gonna change the color again to light brown. Oh, I closed it too early. Actually, I want another blob. The reason why I want two blobs um, so that you know it, it creates a variety of uh, different small mini blobs. I'm gonna change the color of it. Let me close that. Yeah. All right. So then I'm gonna adjust all of these mini blobs around. I'm gonna reduce the size of it. Reduce the size of this, and make sure like they're kind of spread out so that it looks uh, different from each other. And then you can even rotate it, change the size, like maybe this one I want it a little bit smaller. I can put this here. And then maybe put this one a little smaller over here as well. Yeah, so now once you have a couple, then you can group it together. And then I'm gonna copy and paste it like at different places so that it looks spread out. So you don't have to keep like creating blobs. Yeah. I'm gonna put it over here, maybe like this. Yeah, it looks good. Feel free to like adjust however you like. All right, very nice. Now I'm going to click create sorry now i'm going to create the thank you um font at the top so i'm going to do that is just click on the type function and then click here type out thank you and then um extend the box a little bit because right now it is too um, small all right now i'm going to tilt it so it gives a little bit more character yeah and I'm gonna change the font color to dark brown to the one that is in my color palette over here. Yeah, very nice. So you can see like um, the blob groups are kind of outside the frame, so I have to frame it back and put it in back, yeah, like that. All right, so now I have to thank you over here. It looks good. The last but not least, I need to add in the labels. So I can create that by going to the shape function again, cre uh, select on rectangle, and then draw my shape. So maybe something like this. And then I want it in white. 
So right now the shape is sharp edged. I need it to be curved so I can go here on the top right here. Click maybe, I think 30 looks good. Yeah, 30. Okay, so 30. I'm gonna put it over here maybe. Don't put it too close to the edge because you already know like um, YouTube elements won't be able to, to reach over there. So I'm gonna put it here and then I'm gonna type out subscribe now or subscribe here works too up to you I'm gonna change this font size it's too big and then change the color again to match thank you and then put it in here within the text box I mean within the shape that you have created yeah I like this now you can group this together so that it stays together and then I'm gonna copy and paste it on the side here so that you can put another element on the right so i'm gonna put this towards the center more and then this one yeah and then put watch more so i'm gonna put like another video at the bottom so there you go you actually have this done and you just have to export this click on this frame one here and then click on export either a PNG or JPEG, that's up to you. There you go. And once you have included this in your video, do make sure and try out to put it in your YouTube studio before you upload your video. Play around and see where the elements look good and then adjust that and then save it. I actually created five different templates and all of these are for free. If you'd like to download all of this in a PNG format, click in the link description down below. It will guide you to this page over here on Gumroad and then you can purchase it. It does not cost any money if you like to support the channel and give me a little bit of motivation on creating more content for you guys, then you can name a fair price. If not, then it is free of charge. But if you like to go a step further and you want to have the Figma editable file, it only costs a dollar. You can click on the second item over here and then put in one dollar and then click purchase. From there on, then you can download and then import in your Figma file and start editing. I really hope this video was helpful. Do feel free to drop me any comments down below if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for your time. Bye.